I didn't know about autism when I was a kid. Um, I wasn't diagnosed with any of the things that are so common in schools today, uh, ADHD, autism, uh, OCD, dyslexia, um, because for the most part, none of that stuff was recognized yet. And um, I didn't receive any accommodations other than counseling for being a disobedient kid and a delinquent. And the result was that I couldn't really pass school and I dropped out. Um, I was very lucky that my parents were at a university and I was able to study in the um, labs there and I was able to pursue my interest in electronics, which they encouraged. Um, I loved music and I got involved uh, fixing and then building uh, first uh, amplifiers and then musical instruments and special effects for local bands. And I started working for bigger and bigger bands. I actually uh, turned uh, 21 riding the ferry to Corner Brook, Newfoundland on the road with April Wine for the first glance tour. And um, on that tour, that was the first time I went all over Canada and I probably played every hockey rank in Eastern Canada. And then we went to the Calgary Stampede. We went to the bigger halls in Western Canada. And, um, and then later on, I became the engineer for KISS doing um, special effects guitars. So now I look back on that time and I realize that autism disabled me in school. I couldn't do what they wanted me to do. And I, I had no ability to connect with people socially. But everyone's a weirdo and a freak in music, and they welcomed me in the music world. And there, my autistic fixation on electronics and music was a tremendous gift. So the very, um, I eventually left that because I didn't know how to continue doing it where I lived in rural New England. And I started a business fixing and restoring cars, and it was actually from one of the customers at the car business that I learned about autism, Asperger's, and myself when I was uh, 40 years old. And at that time, I had a lot of stuff I'd done in my life, and, and I could see how autism was both a disability and a thing that made me exceptional. And when I learned about it, I wanted to share my experiences growing up with young people, because I thought there must be millions of kids growing up today that are having the same crummy experiences I did as a boy. And that was really the thing that set me on the road to uh, advocacy. And um, in, once I started writing and speaking, people asked me to get involved in guiding science, which led me to my service with the government on our Interagency Autism Coordinating Committee, which again brings me to Canada for collaborations in autism research. And it invited qu quite a few universities to uh, ask me to come and speak. And uh, one of them, William and Mary in Virginia, actually um, made me a part of neuro their neurodiversity program, appointing me the neurodiversity scholar, which is something that I do today. And, uh, and I think it's uh, really, it's been a remarkable journey from being kind of a rock and roll outlaw to being a college faculty and serving um, government in, in helping to shape autism policy, but that's, that's how it happened.